Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my NHL 20 franchise mode here in the state of hockey. In the previous episode we battled our longtime rivals in the Colorado Avalanche in the second round of the 2029 Stanley Cup playoffs and we emerged victorious another six game bout in the western conference and damn it was a series and a half i'm not gonna lie you know, really back and forth i know we went up two games to nothing they come back with the win in colorado we get the game for victory they win i believe they win in minnesota the 3-1 victory and then we win in six and hot damn another closer series than I had originally thought. We've already lost four games in the Stanley Cup playoffs. We definitely could have ended these series a lot quicker than we had than they had ended. You know, we, we should have. That's what should have happened. What happened was we didn't close out. And I'm a, I'm a little worried about that because we've had the tendency to have a series lead in previous years and completely blow it. It happens from time to time, but it feels like we do it on a pretty consistent basis. We go all the way back to our first ever Stanley Cup Finals. We were two victories away against the Philadelphia Flyers for our first ever Stanley Cup. We blow that, we end up winning the Cup the next year. It's... There's something weird with this team. We put up points. Our players are great. There's no doubt about it. It just, something seems a little off. But we got the W at the end of the day. We are here and we are playing the 40, 32, and 10 Winnipeg Jets. They kind of stumbled into the playoffs. But before we can talk about Winnipeg, I want to talk about how our players have been doing through 12 games and 2 rounds. As you see right there, Quinn Hughes is leading for defense, but let's talk about the forwards. There are a few things I'm noticing right out of the gates that's a little concerning. Kel Newman has nine goals. Phenomenal. Two game winning goals. His second round was phenomenal. Just crazy. He was definitely our MVP last round. But he's a minus seven. Now, he has how many power play points? He has five power play points. He does have a minus seven, though. That is a that is very rough. De definitely for a leading point scorer, that's rough. You know, and I see all of our second liners are minus players. So, very similar to... Not similar to last year. The complete opposite. I don't know why I said similar. So, compared to last year where we had Nolan Patrick on the second line, who wasn't an offensive presence even though he had a really decent second round, or decent postseason last year against a first round, I can't recall, and second round Dallas. It seems like he really helped them defensively. I get that. Jack Eichel is definitely not the best defensive player in the world. I understand that. Trust me, I do. I got him to be an impact player, and he has. He has nine points. Two game winners, by the way. Four power play points, right? He's been good. But something about that second line has been very, very iffy. Kale Newman is a minus player. Not just minus two or minus three. He's a minus seven. Langweeder is a minus five, and this guy's usually a really good plus player. Power forward, you need him to be a plus player. But let's talk about some of the positives. I mean, they're... They're putting up points, right? It would be a different story if they were, if they had five points through 12 games and they were a minus seven. There would be a difference. They're putting up points. They've been important for us. Anthony Francis kind of slowed down there in the second round. He went below a point per game. It happens. He kind of had a rough there the second round playing against Nathan McKinnon and a bunch of other studs on the Colorado Avalanche. But, you know, he that's no excuse. He needs to be the guy every single evening. But 11 points in 12 games is good. He's going to be, he's going to have to be our best player if we want to win another Stanley Cup. Kirill Kaprasov, as the captain, has been really damn good. Five goals, four assists, nine points, plus two. He's a captain, through and through. 
Love him to death. Lewis Langmeter, as we talked about before, 9 points, minus 5. Now on the flip side, Alexei Petrangelov has 9 points and has a plus 7. He does have 16 penalty minutes. It's a liffy. He's only shooting at 6%, but he has the one game winner. All of those game winners are important. He has not been bad. Jack Eichel is putting up points. He did miss the first three games of the first... Four games. Four games of the first round. Uh, for, for, did he play game number one? I want to say he played game... No. He got hurt at the end of the season. Yes? I want to say he got hurt at the end of the season. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, he got hurt totally. No, apparently he didn't. He got hurt in... I want to say he got hurt in game number one. Missed a few games. Came back and he's been... Really damn good. Defensively, could be better. And then after our top six... I mean, is there somebody missing there from the top six? No, there is not. You got Lionel Waters. Six points in 12 games as a sophomore in the postseason. He's been reliable defensively. No penalty minutes, which is a huge check mark. I love him to death. Bobby Bobson. One of the most buttery names in the entire NHL. Four points, three goals, one game winner. That's a positive. Uh, Vacheslav Chubasov, uh, plus seven, four points. That's good in my books. You got Gogolev, he's got three goals, so he's scoring a few goals, but he could definitely be better. I know, I know he has to become a top six player for us. He's 86 overall, does not mean he's second line forward just yet, because who the hell am I going to kick out? Of the top six at this point. It's a discussion for a later point, but he needs to pick it up. Chris Griffin hasn't been terrible. He's a plus player. No penalty minutes. Falberger hasn't been bad. And Fitzgerald, the throw-in player. Uh, minus one in four games, but ah, he's a beauty. No doubt about it. And the defense, which hopefully... Oh, ho, ho. Damn. Quinn Hughes is the best defenseman in the last generation. You can look at uh, Lidstrom. You can look at Bobby Orr. You can look at Paul Coffey. You can look at all those guys. But in the modern era, has there been a better defenseman? You can go all the way back. All the way back until I want to say 2023. He's been the best defenseman in the NHL. He might have not won the Norris right there. But every single season after that... He's been the man, 118 points only two seasons ago. Over 100 assists in that season. He's had over an assist per game the last four years. Six years if you... If he had two extra assists there in 2025. He's the man. And he's proving that here in the postseason. 17 points in 12 games... Mirroring that to a few postseasons ago where he was a liability. This play, uh, this postseason run, 13 games, 7 assists, minus 1. He wasn't great. And he has one more game and 10 more points. Or one less game and 10 more points this year. He's got to be... He's got, Him and Anthony Francis need to continue their path of domination. Brant Clark has been friggin' awesome. There's not much more to say. They're all really good plus players. Marcus Mirnov, absolute beauty. I think he just turned 27. That's that's scary to see. So he's been in the league for nine years. Love him to death. Uh, Georges Bissonnette's seven point. B did I just say Bissonnette? Bissonnette, no S. I mean, no, no S at the end. Uh, <laughs> two goals, five assists, seven points, plus four. We need we need to start giving this guy a little bit more time because I don't know if I'm the biggest pan pan I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of Poffin. I know a lot of people in the comments like oh Maurice Poffin. I really have a soft spot for Bissonette. The guy who really isn't performing is Harry Parrish. Oh he's young he's 19 he's 82 overall. I know he's ready for the show. Maybe it's just uh, he's a little jittery in the postseason. He's a minus four. He could definitely be better. He's definitely taken his he's taken the second most amount of shots by defenseman. I know it's it's only it's gonna be a bit of time before he cracks that next that next milestone, but he'll do it soon. I believe in him. And goaltending. 
Rensfeld's been bad. Uh, straight up. I mean, I, second round wasn't as iffy as the first round. First round was just, uh, I don't want to talk about it. But we got there. Now, I believe Terrell Mackey played game number six. I haven't recorded in a few days. It's been three, four days since I last recorded, so I'm sorry if you asked any questions. I know a lot of people in the comments are asking me to show them players that they asked me to create who were drafted. Uh, next season, I'm going to do an entire league video where I go around the league and check all that stuff. So be ready for that. That's a few episodes down the road. So come back in a few extra days and uh, you'll get your wish. But getting back on track, Taramaki wasn't the best in Game 6. But he got us the victory. I'm going to go back with Rensfeld in the Western Conference Finals against Winnipeg. Just, maybe he just needs a little bit of confidence. Every goalie needs a little bit of confidence to go places, you know? And before we get to what Winnipeg looks like this year, I want to see how they got here. So the Winnipeg Jets, round number one, they beat Anaheim in seven. Round number two, they beat Vancouver. We have played the Winnipeg Jets a few times in the postseason. And in the Eastern Conference Finals, you have the Buffalo Sabres and the New York Rangers. For storyline purposes, obviously we want to make it to the Finals. And Buffalo, it seems that we might have a matchup on our hands. Some storytelling at its finest. Oh my. Okay. So, the Winnipeg Jets. I know they have some stars. I can recall one... Off the top of my head, it is Jesper Straka. Jesper Straka is a legitimate tank. Six foot four, 24 years of age. He's a medium franchise potential, 107 points. He has 100 point seasons everywhere, 624 points in under 500 games. He missed 10 games this season. He contends for the Rocket. Every single year he's in the league. He's won it two, two times, tied for once, won it once outright. He's scary. He is legitimately scary. I know you got a 97 overall Patrick Line, but Straka is frightening. But let's talk about his wingers. Jamie Gallivan, who is another created player by myself, just sprinkled a lot of them into the drafts if you're not. If you're new here and you're wondering why the hell is there a 99 overall on the other team, well, it's because I created him and I drafted him because I got the chance to. So please don't hate. <laughs> Jamie Gallivan, though, it's a solid left winger. And then you got Patty Line, 31 years of age. He's in his prime. He's a goal scorer, I believe. I want to say he's a legitimate... Uh, he scores... 30-40 every season. Hasn't broken 50 just yet, which is quite strange, but I guess Straka is getting the majority of those goals, but that is a trio and a half. Second line, you got Christian Veselainen. Damn good second line left winger. You got Justin Almeida and Kyle Connor. Now, I did we play Winnipeg last year in the first round? I want to say we did? I mean, I could check right now because my phone's right there. But if I go onto my phone, then, I, then I'll have to cut out the bit where I'm looking for it, and then I just keep... T it's a whole process. I don't feel like it. Kyle Connor is also pretty damn good. So that's a great top six. I'm going to say our top six is better, just because we have all 90 overalls. It's not always about that. But Jesper Straka is definitely going to counteract Anthony Francis. Third line, you got Liam Foudy. Jordan Greenway, former Minnesota Wild. We traded him a long time ago. I can't remember. I think he just didn't fit into our lineup. Yeah, a bunch of seasons ago. Seven years ago, we traded him to the Calgary Flames. He was there for a bit, comes over to Winnipeg, has a solid season. Not the best plus minus, but it looks like they struggled in the regular season. What I'm looking at right now, I get it. They might have not gelled so well. But they're here in the Western Conference Finals for a reason. They also have Brandon Spiller. You got uh, Jared McCann, Yoni Aikinen, and you got Carl Grundstrom. That's a really well-constructed forward squad. I, I get why they would struggle, but I also get why they could do some major damage in the postseason. Defense, what's it looking like? Ah, uh, yes. Fredlick. Fr oh, I do this every time. 
Fred Elric. Fred Elric. Fred Elric. Fred Elric. For the love of God. Blodker. <laughs> 26 years of age. 6 foot 10 monster. The tallest player in the NHL today. Yes, he's taller than Zdeno Chara. Yes, the computer made him grow a bit in his draft year. Yes, I don't understand it. Yes, it's cool as hell. Please don't complain. <laughs> Seems like he's a solid, solid defenseman. He had a few really rough years in Pittsburgh. Yeah, we did play. We totally played Winnipeg last year. Yeah, they did. They picked him up last year as a, as a depth guy, as or as their just a rental. And he came over to Winnipeg, had a solid year this year. Twenty-one points, thirteen goals. He's just a beast. He's an absolute beast. How many hits did this guy have? Does it show hits? 123. That's a few hits. Yeah, I'll give it to him. That is their top defenseman. They also got Andrew Peak. Or Peaky. You got uh, Tobias uh, Bjornfoot. You got uh, Jacob Bernard Docker. Nolan Pettinger. And you got Josh Morrissey. You know what? You got your one superstar defenseman. I wouldn't call him a superstar, but he's got the height advantage for sure. And you have middle of the pack, 80 overall or 83 overall guys. That's a great defensive core. That's better than most NHL teams in this franchise mode series. But it always comes down to goaltending, doesn't it? Their starting goaltender is Igor Dehus. Uh, I created this guy too. No idea how to pronounce that. Igor. I'm just going to call him Igor. He's got the low franchise overall or potential. And their backup goalie is Tuka Hemelainen. Any scratch players? They got... Oh, no! Oh, I regret my decision. Oh, I get it. Ooh, he must have just gotten healthy, too. Adam Boquist. We have met this guy plenty of times before. We have we know... We got his number, though. Back in his Chicago days where we faced him and we beat him each and every single time. He was a machine... He's young, full of life, and he's here on a thriving Winnipeg Jets team. They're here in the postseason, and he's going to do some damage. Oh, that, just add him to that already decent defensive core, and you got a great team. You got a very deep team. They might have struggled in the regular season, but they're here in the Western Conference Finals for a chance to head to the Cup Finals for, I believe, the first time in their franchise's history. Okay. Game numero one here on Home Ice XL Energy Center. First period. Two to nothing. That is the way to start out the series. Lewis Langweeder back to back. Two minutes apart. You you hold him off to four shots in the first period. Jeez, you tripled him in shots. 15 shots through 20 minutes. Let's keep it going. Second period. Okay, they score the first goal. Blodker scores the opening goal for Winnipeg in this series. That's fair. And Alexi Petrangelov scores about halfway through that period. They definitely got a lot of shots through 40 minutes. 17 shots. They got uh, 13 in the second period. And we have 27. We're keeping pace. Let's keep it going. A two-goal lead is never safe, especially with the team that they have. Can we get one more? Make it a nice... Clean 4-1 victory. Power play. Alexi Petrangelov. And back-to-back -back power play goals. Can he complete? I mean, that's a hat trick for him. Damn, what a game number one for Alexi Petrangelov. He went off. Crushed Igor. Kaprasov gets on the board. Our power play is red hot here in game number one. I will take a 6-1 victory on home ice. Your first star. Four points. Two hits. And the hat trick. For Petra Angelov, the Russian who played in America in his junior days. That was an impressive game one victory. Hopefully the momentum is on our side. Game number two, let's take it at home and head over to Winnipeg. They don't have an airport, by the way. And Jack Eichel scores early into this period. Let's see how it goes. Two to nothing. We actually saw both those goals simulated. Jack Eichel scores pretty early into that period. 42 seconds to be exact. Oh, you love him. 
Oh, he's a beauty. Bobby Bobson, one of the most buttery names in the entire NHL, makes it 2 nothing. Very similar to game number one, except they have the shot advantage. Second period. Oh, yes, please. Lewis Langwee to make that three goals in two games in the Western Conference Finals. They're still out shooting us. 25-23. to 23. But we have the most important statistic. Goals. Third period underway. Let's hold them off. As I said before in game number one, anything can happen. Jack Eichel make that two on the evening for the absolute beauty. Power play. Can we get anything off of that? Nope. Another power play. Nothing. We're about halfway through the third period. Quarter of the way left. And we... It seems like we're going to hold out for a game number two victory. Make that a shutout. I'm not going to say anything about it. Because I believe in voodoo. And me just acknowledging that is absolute voodoo. But we walk out of Minnesota with a two games to nothing advantage over the Winnipeg Jets. And we're heading to Winnipeg. We have, to, we have to travel there by bus because they don't have an airport in Winnipeg. Yes, Winnipeg, I don't mean to trash on you, but you don't have an airport. That's, hey, hey, I'm, I didn't say, hey, I'm just acknowledging facts here. Straight facts, okay? Game number three, Bell MTS place. Here we go. Quinn Hughes has been a beast quietly. Game number three, here we go. First period, zero to zero. Okay. Shots are in our favor, 12 to 8. But that was a goaltending duel there in the first period, second period. Ooh! Ooh! Wee, baby, look at that! Alexei Petrangelov opens the scoring with a shorty. Thalberger makes it 2 0. Kaprasov on the board again. And Kale Newman to make it 4 to nothing. Ren's faults. Shutout streak ends after five periods. Five, four, four, five periods. Oh my God, good for him. Still, so, eh, I believe in voodoo, you never know. Shots are in our favor, 25 to 24, but we have the most important statistic, as I said before, goals. They're important to win, apparently. Power play for Winnipeg. We kill it off. Langweeder with another goal in this Western Conference Finals, and it looks like we are going to stomp them three games in a row on home ice in Winnipeg. Alexei Petrangelov says no. Oh, and McCann with another goal there, and uh, Francis will get his first of the Western Conference Finals, a 7-3 stomping. Anthony Francis with a quiet 4-point night, huh? Absolute beauty. Not going to lie. So, quickly, we turn this series into an, absolute, into an absolute circus show. And somebody had to go and flush the toilet. Again, really? Is everybody... Do they pick the... <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to go on a tangent about somebody flushing a toilet in this house. Swear to God. But we quickly turn this series into a circus show. Why is circus such a hard... Word to say, apparently. I don't know why. Apparently it is. 3-0 advantage. The Rangers are up 2-1 over the Buffalo Sabres. I mean, you know if we play Buffalo in the finals, Buffalo is going to beat us because that's how voodoo works, obviously. Game number four. We have a chance to close out this series on their home ice. I mean, we'd have to take a bus back. We'd be a little hungover if we partied there. I mean, that's... Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. No, nah, uh, I mean, I want to win here because I, that's the, how I started this episode, talking about how we didn't know how to close out series. Let's close it out. Close it out. Game number four, Bell MTS Place. Let's start it out. Great. First period. Two nothing. Anthony Francis after a four-point evening just a night ago, or two nights ago in Winnipeg starts it off right, and Brant Clark ends the period... 1-1-1 one, one, one remaining in the first period with a goal making it 2-0. Shots are in Winnipeg's favor, 11-8. Second period. Oh my god, the offense is absolutely rolling over Winnipeg. Winnipeg rolled over and died. 
They rolled over and died. They had no give. I've seen teams before, and Jesus, they had... Usually, being on a 3-0... Being at a 3-0 deficit, they give a little more give than this, but my God, Langweeder and Petrangelov, phenomenal series for them. They outshoot us, but man, oh man, our offense has been phenomenal this series so far. A power play for Winnipeg. This is probably all she wrote in four games. A 4 nothing lead in Winnipeg. We will head to the Stanley Cup Finals for the first time in a few seasons for a chance at our franchise's third Stanley Cup. Your first star of the evening, I'm not even going to say it because I believe in voodoo. A phenomenal all-around series. Minnesota is heading back. To the promised land, but we have four more games to win. The Rangers look to have a big series lead over Buffalo. Can they battle back? Can they battle back? Are they going to a game seven? They are going to a game seven. You know how this works out. Our opponents in the Stanley Cup Finals in 2029. The New York Rangers... Beating Buffalo in seven. I thought the hockey gods were going to say Buffalo. But no. The New York Rangers, a phenomenal regular season team, will collide with the best regular season team in a seven-game series for Lord Stanley Cup. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this one, please leave a like, leave a comment, share with people who you think may enjoy this sort of thing. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.